from gardening to animals to extreme renovations. Welcome to Homesteading at College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Today we're going to talk about how to use a hoe. Today we're going to talk about how to use a hoe. Uh, I've showed you about sharpening a hoe. When you get a hoe for the first time, here's an example of one of my hoes. This is my onion hoe. Uh, I use it for other stuff too, but mainly it's my onion hoe. And Crystal uses it in her flower beds. She loves this part. And uh, it's easy to get around her flowers and things. But uh, if you go back and check out our other videos, I show you uh, about selecting a hoe, why you should select it, you know. Uh, the hoe needs to be taller than your shoulder. It needs to be so that when you hold it out about 18 inches away from you, the handle is right here at your shoulder level and your other hand goes down. Now, the reason I do, I'm going to go over how to use a hoe. A lot of the folks on the channel have never done this lifestyle. I was raised doing this. I've been hoeing since I was uh, nine years old. That sounds bad, but I've been using a hoe since I was nine years old. So, folks who've never done this have no clue. And they start out and they wind up taking their hoe and using it like it's a club. They hold it like this and they bend over and dig, dig, dig. Well, before long, you're wore out. You need to learn how to pace yourself and use your hoe standing straight up. You know, you can stand straight up for a long time. So I'm going to show you how to use a hoe and how to hoe different vegetables. Uh, all we're going to hoe today is uh, tomatoes, onions, and uh, bell peppers. But each one of them's hoed different. And I'm going to show you the difference. So let's start off with just some basic hoe mechanics. First off, you don't want to hold the hoe. You don't want to choke up on it. Hold it down here and use it like that. That's just going to hurt your back. Going to make your arms tired. Okay? You want that hoe. You want to hold on to it. Put one hand here. One hand about there away so that it's comfortable for you to stand up and the hoe is about all oh, 14 to 18 inches from your right foot or left foot if you're left-handed okay so you want to be where you can stand straight up and hoe so let's get over here and have a look I'm gonna start off in the, the peppers so I'm not going to use this hoe for hoeing my peppers because the pepper plants are way far apart. I want to use a bigger hoe. I'll show you which one. Now, here's the hoe I'm going to use for the peppers. It's just a standard hoe. Now, they make a lot of different hoes. Honeybee and, and there's just a lot of them. Uh, a lot of them have come and gone over the years. This standard hoe has been around since cavemen. Uh, it's not changed in design a lot. Now, at the end of the year, I sharpen my hoe. This one's a little bit dull in comparison to what it normally is. But if you hoe at the right time, it doesn't have to be real sharp. But it, I like to have my hoe as sharp as a knife. Because that way, I can get close to the plants and just shave the weeds off. Okay, let's uh, show you a little of the mechanics. Here I am in with my peppers now what you want to do in doing this you want to take and hold the hoe while standing straight up and then just drag it along the ground you don't have to do extensive work with it you drag that baby along the ground and if your hoe's good and sharp it just cuts everything right off.
see that not bent over not straining I can go down through here and hoe this whole complete 100 foot row without killing myself it's it's a very gentle process so I'm gonna get at that and you can see a little bit as we go hundred foot row of peppers hoed out in a little under 10 minutes. You know, hoe work doesn't have to break your back as long as you know how to use your hoe. Next I'm going to show you how to hoe the tomatoes. Uh, you'll notice when I hoe the peppers, I don't pull extra dirt up around the pepper. Uh, some plants you do that. Tomatoes, you do it. Potatoes, you do it. Uh, tomatoes, you do it. And corn, you do it. You pull extra dirt up around corn stalk. And that helps them withstand the wind. They don't put on extra roots, but it just helps them withstand the wind a little better. Uh, I'm going to do tomatoes now. Show you how to do those. Uh, again, you pull extra dirt up around the tomato plant because... All along the stem, anywhere there's dirt, tomatoes put on, put on roots. So it'll just add extra root to give you extra fruit. So let's uh, do the tomato plants. I'm going to use the big hoe again. So remember those body mechanics. All right, stay standing up. Don't bend way over. So I'm going to kill off the weeds. Try not to cut my plant. Then once I've got the weeds killed off, <clears throat> you'll notice this tomato is wanting to lean a little. So, I'm going to help him stand up. Okay, that tomato's hoed. Clear out the weeds. This tomato's standing up good. So I'm just going to go ahead and just pull some dirt around him that weed out of there and that tomatoes hoed so I've got a hundred foot row of tomatoes to do so I'm gonna get at it okay time to hoe onions uh, this is the hoe I use for onions the reason I use this hoe for onions is twofold first off these tines are real tiny I can turn them and get them into anywhere close to the onion and this is narrow okay it's only like two and a half inches apart I plant my onions four to six inches apart see the see the value in this uh, this one again hadn't been sharpened yet this year so I have to dig a little bit more but I'll sharpen them up good in the next day or two because I've got a whole lot of hoeing to do so let's talk let's show you how to hoe onions remember those body mechanics stay standing straight up you know hold this one that way and then like that and that will make life so much easier for you when you're hoeing in your garden 
these onions are about three weeks old so they're just right uh, one thing you want to do is don't wait too long to hoe uh, get at it soon so now I'm gonna take the prongs here let me set the thing where I can see you didn't have the camera where I could see you okay you set the prong I'm gonna use the prongs see that part on either side of the onion just work it right out now to go between the onions this hoe is just the perfect size so those onions are hoed out and I didn't bend down not one time uh, so I've got a hundred foot row of onions here that I'm gonna hoe out and then I'll come back to you hundred foot row of onions hoed uh, took me about 18 minutes uh, <clears throat> now when it comes to hoeing uh, onions peppers Cucumber, squash, they all get hoed pretty much the same way. You don't pull extra dirt up around them. Uh, the reason being is they don't form extra roots along the stock, and that's just somewhere else for uh, disease to get at them. Uh, <clears throat> now, I plow with my tiller as close to the row as I dare get, so that means that there's about a foot that I leave on uh, each or about six to eight inches on each side of the plant so I wind up with a foot 16 inches worth of hoeing to do uh, but onions peppers squash uh, that stuff you don't put any extra dirt around them as a matter of fact if you push a little dirt away from your onions you're probably doing yourself a favor uh, the next part uh, was tomatoes of course tomatoes you pull dirt up around them you do it at corn and beans if they're in the corn. So you pull dirt up around the base of them. Uh, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, that's all pretty much just like the onions. Now I've got uh, 200 feet of tomatoes and uh, tomatoes and eggplant to do. Eggplants just like uh, the peppers. Uh, I've got that to do. I've got another hundred feet of onions to do. So I've got to get at this hoeing thing. Uh, if you like these videos, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. Whether you're doing uh, row crop like I do, standard row crop, or you're doing beds, you know, you can glean some good information from what we do here on the channel. I do a lot of teaching because a lot of the folks who come to my channel have never gardened before and they're just starting on their journey. So now it's time for me to get on to the next thing.